Edward, where are you from? Uh, from Scottsdale, Arizona. Do you, is there a Pride event in uh, Scottsdale or Phoenix? Uh, they have it in Phoenix once a year in April. Uh, it's not as good as the one in L.A., though. Uh, now, traditionally, Arizona has been a red state. Yes, it has. Until rather recently, and it's going purple. And that's because a lot of the people that are moving from California because of the high taxes and the high rents and cost of housing and because of the liberal policies, they're moving to Arizona. But some of them are bringing those same kinds of attitudes and they're changing the perception that people have. So hopefully they'll come with values that are more conservative. Now, we've had a traditionally conservative districts here, uh, Repub uh, 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 House of Representatives district that because of the Hispanic influx have turned blue. Uh, Dana Rohrabacher is an example, Daryl Issa is another example. What's the, what's the situation like for the uh, Hispanics changing the uh, political color? Well, I'm not I don't think I understand the question fully, but in Arizona we have a big influx of Hispanics which are influencing elections and hopefully in Arizona we don't have the open policy where you just go register for uh, to vote at a DMV motor vehicle, and uh, like we have in California, like what happens in California, because I understand there's a lot of illegals who vote in the statewide in, in federal elections, and I think they only have the right to do that in local elections. But I think it's stupid to have non-citizens vote anyway because it just leads to more problems. And I think what happens is if you offer such people situations where they're getting free stuff, they're going to take it. And I kind of resent the fact that I have to work hard for me, and yet it's given to people who don't have to work. What do you think about uh, the president's uh, pardoning of Sheriff Joe Arpaio while we're on the subject of Arizona? I'm sorry? What do, you, what do you think about the pardoning of uh, Sheriff oh, Joe Arpaio? I think it was great because he was, he was fulfilling his duty as as a sheriff in Arizona, and yet a judge who didn't like him made a decision that he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have uphold the Constitution of the United States. So I, I resent that fact. But the, the single judge made that decision about Ohio. Uh, is there support for Sheriff Joe in, in Arizona? There's support for Joe, Sheriff Joe, as our sheriff. He is running for uh, Senate in New Jersey in the Republican primary. And unfortunately, I am not voting for Joe. I'm voting for Martha McSally. And she's very conservative. Uh, she helps the VA. And she has conservative values that will help the United States. And Kristen Sinema, who's going to be the Democrat, was a socialist before she became a Democrat. And so she has socialist values, not even Democrat, old-time Democrat values, which I don't understand old-time Democrats are going for the socialist propaganda that the Democrats are putting out now in today's society. Were they uh, old-time socialists just masquerading as Democrats? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, you, you're saying old-time Democrats are now going for the socialist agenda. I'm asking, were they... Were they they, well, they, they're voting Democrat because they voted Democrat, their parents voted Democrat, their grandparents. They don't know, I don't think they know the difference. In Scottsdale, I think if you were to ask some of the old-time Democrats certain policies that the Democrats are fulfilling, they'd be like John Kennedy and say, what are you, crazy? Like, they're not the same Democrats, but that's the way their parents and grandparents voted. What do you think about the leftist, the, the leftist leadership in the Democrat Party these days? Well, it, it is nothing but leftist. I mean, when you consider that uh, Nancy Pelosi is all in favor of MS-13, she's come out and basically gave him a big hug and said, welcome to the United States. I mean, when they're killing our kids, they're killing our parents, and they're destructive. So why have them here? And, and also, you know, the tax cuts that were passed, they're helping individuals. My t you know, I'm a middle-income person, and it helped me financially. And uh, I, I just think that, I don't think they have anything to run on except anti-Trump. And it's not going to work because the economy is growing, unemployment is low, even for blacks it's low, and, and Hispanics. Uh, do you 
get a sense that there's uh, a, a politicization of the LGBT community? Um, by, the, by the LGBT leadership? Is there a, a partnership with the far left? I'm not sure about that politicization. I can see them where they would go that way to get more followers, but I don't think it's healthy for any kind of leadership of the LGBT key to, to do that. But I, that's, I think that's their agenda. And I see a lot of signs here about equality, and I'm like, how much more equal can you already get? What do you want? Do you want equality? You already have the rights to, to marry, to love whomever you want in California. It's like, I don't, I don't know what their agenda is, but the LGBTQ community doesn't realize that some of the policies of the Democrat policy, the Democrat policies are leading to immigration of people who hate this country, who hate gays. The people from the Middle East, the, the Muslims from the Middle East, they're coming here and they'd rather throw you off the Pacific Design Center than do anything for you. And that's what, that's what Pulse was all about in Orlando. It wasn't about being anti-gay from a, like a normal Christian person. It was the Muslim community trying to kill gays. But the, the LGBTQ community will not let you know that. So it's all about anti-gay when it should be the Muslims that hate gays. So there's this notion of inclusiveness, which, uh, can you hear me? Okay. So the LGBT leadership promotes this multiculturalism and idea of inclusiveness, but they aren't inclusive of conservative ideas or conservative people, but they are inclusive of uh, anti-democratic uh, Islamists and jihadists. That's true. As a, as a gay conservative Republican, um, my views are discounted. I'm not considered one of them. And I have friends that actually have ostracized me and, and told me to get lost. And I really don't care because they want to follow this agenda and keep on following an agenda that's going to lead to the path of socialism. And they're all, they're all middle income and high income people. And what's going to happen is that they're actually going to lose out by what they're doing to themselves. I could see having the freedom and you know, equality but what's happening is that they're opening themselves up that they're going to give away a lot of their freedoms, like gun control. You know, as, as many people say, guns don't kill people, people kill people. And what's happening in our schools is ridiculous. They're not given, they're not given strong values. So what's happening is that we're losing people and to their values that America was made for. So that's what really bugs me. And we have people that just, they follow the leader. It's like a cattle mentality. Wherever the leader goes, that's where they go. So in the gay community, they're followers. There's no strong leaders. And is the leadership here uh, being co-opted in some, is the leadership here being co-opted by the left? Well, the leadership of the Democrat Party is to have an open, community with LGBTQ people, but they really, I don't think they really respect gays. I think they're just using us, in my opinion. Because of this, uh, uh, as you say, uh, a lemming kind of uh, dynamic? I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. There's a, you say that people are following whatever the leadership does as uh, they're following blindly. But yeah, they they follow blindly. Like after the after Trump's election and the inauguration, which by the way I attended, I mean you you just have these people, even relatives of mine, who are thinking the world is going to come to an end, and here we are a year and a half later, and guess what? Everything is the way it was, and America is better. America is better than it was before with Obama. Uh, low unemployment, more income. Our incomes went down during the eight years of Obama. Even people on Social Security, they got 1% or less every year. And what happened this year? 2%. They got 2% this year, and it was because the Republicans are in charge. The Democrats are always saying, oh, the Republicans are going to take away your Social Security. But the only ones who ever made changes in Social Security, the lockbox, were the Democrats. Democrats have always changed Social Security to the, for the worse. And yet the Democrats use it as a ploy against Republicans. 
and it's the stupidest thing. And people listen to that. They listen to the garbage that the Democrats throw out, and they believe it. And that's how I think gay. That's how gays are. Gays are the same. They listen to whatever the the leadership of the Democrat Party says, and they go their way. And they don't care about America values or what we need to hold true as America. Another question for you, uh, because because you're uh, you're very, obviously very intelligent and articulate. Uh, and so I, I can, can you hear me okay? Yeah. So my my question is, uh, as coming from a Republican background in Arizona, would I consider to be a, would you consider Arizona to be a Christian state largely? A Christian state? Well, it has been, and actually, I'm, I'm not a. I lived in California before I moved to Arizona. I lived in West Hollywood. Moved to Cal I moved to Arizona. And before that, I came from the most Democratic county in the United States, in New Jersey, Hudson County, New Jersey, which was also one of the most corrupt counties in the United States. But uh, I think it's basically still a Christian uh, state. Uh, even the Hispanics, when they went for uh, Hillary in the last election, but Trump had more uh, Hispanic votes this last election than uh, Mitt Romney did in 2012. And I have family that's, they, they're Hispanic, Mexican, from New Mexico, and they're all Republican. So, and they're all good Christians. My, my, my family, you know, they're Christian, Catholic. And um, I think most of Arizona is. Now, let me ask you this, because uh, when you look at the uh, demographics of the supporters of the uh, of the 2016 Trump election, uh -huh. the evangelicals were a large part of his support and still are. And and as a Trump supporter yourself, as a Republican, and, and you, you seem to like the presidency, uh, how are evangelicals accepting you as a fellow Republican in spite of the fact oh, of, of your actually, uh, gender identity? In my family, they know, and they're very accepting. And I think they're a microcosm of Christian or Catholic values. You know, they, if they know who you are, they're very accepting of that fact. And that's how it's been all my life. But evangelicals who aren't familiar, who don't have friends or relatives in the gay community, who don't know, in their church, aren't they turned against homosexuality? Uh, they can be, but they're also, they don't have the knowledge. They don't, maybe they don't know gay people. Or they know gay people, but they don't know that they're, they're gay. And so that might be a difference right there. But I don't find them, I don't find them intolerant. Yeah, there's, there's people all over the place that are intolerant. There's leftists that are intolerant of me. You know, it's like, so it goes both ways. You know, there could be Christians, and that's their right. They have a right to say, to have their own way of thinking, but so do these people at the gay pride. And yet, if I were to tell half these people here I was Republican, they might even beat me up. I don't know. I, I, I intolerate the left is. Seriously? Yeah. I, I don't, there's not, they're not tolerant at all. Just like the college campuses, they won't let Milo on, they won't let Ann Coulter on. They just throw them out. They start riots and then, then the administration says to me, it's your fault because you brought this to the community. I remember back in the 60s when I was in college, the uh, Democratic Society, the SDS, so, uh, they got whatever they wanted. Students for a Democratic Society. Whatever they wanted, they got. And conservatives, we kind of had the right to talk, but it was all about them. And now it's like, you can't have an alternate view. You have an alternate view and you're ostracized. What do you think of uh, organizing for action, uh, the uh, o Obama uh, and Valerie Jarrett movement to, uh, to uh, undermine the uh, Trump presidency? The, the Trump presidency? Oh, yeah. They're undermining from the, from the uh, Obama. They should really. Actually, I hope the IG comes out with a report that shows that Obama and Lynch and Comey and, H and, H and Hillary were involved in his cover up and they throw them all in jail because. They are trying to undermine what this president is trying to accomplish. And even some Republicans, and I'm really surprised at that, some Republicans are trying to undermine his presidency as well. How about Senator Jeff Flake? Senator Jeff Flake? 
Jeff Flake and John McCain are a breed of Republicans that I never want to see in the Senate again. They represent my state, but they don't represent the Republicans or me. They represent the Democrat Party.